ಓಂ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಗಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಗುಕಾರಸ್ತಂಧಕಾರೋ ವೈ ರುಕಾರಸ್ತನ್ನಿವರ್ತಕ ಅಂಧಕಾರ ನಿರೋಧಿ ಗುರುರಿತ್ಯಭಿಧೀಯತೆ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನ್ನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಧ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಈ ಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆಂತ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಸಂಚಿತ ಗಾಮಿ ಕರ್ಮಿ ದಹ್ಯಂತೆ ಜ್ಞಾನವನ್ಹಿನ ಪ್ರಾರಬ್ಧಾನುಭವಾನ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ಮಿಕ್ ಬರ್ಡನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೂ ಮಚ್ ತ್ರೀ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ವಿ ಸಾ what are they sanchita agami and prarabdha too many things to think about and the sanchita sanchita karma is the a hidden kind of a bank account a hidden bank account where the a hidden bank account where the uh, burden of every single karma that one has done in any lifetime with free will as a human being in any loka in any sphere field of experience is all collected there it is a secret bank account gupta that's why chitra gupta <laughs> hidden <laughs> even now guptas are associated in india being accountants very interesting so then this is a hidden gupta gupta from gup to uh, to be concealed to conceal hidden bank account and then when you look at the karmas then you don't know how is it going to resolve and then there are certain uh, schools of thought <laughs> and what are the schools of thought oh vasana akshaya one school of thought says you can't get moksha until every last karma is destroyed there's only one slight glitch in this argument what is the glitch two small glitches first one <laughs> there are innumerable karmas so how are you going to destroy second one as you are destroying you are collecting mm. <laughs> this loop is there what to do therefore we need to set the karma on fire says the dindima who oh, set it all on fire one uh, big conflagration <sighs> finished yes what is the fire upanishad is the fire shastra is the fire and when the karmas are exposed to the shastras they try to run away but they can't and then they are burnt instead burnt to 
a crisp vibhuti all that is left is ash this is iterated this is probably taken from the bhagavad gita verse which says gnanagni sarva karmani bhasma sat kurute sarva karmani all the karmas bhasma sat the pratyaya called sat uh, means completely sati kartsnye there is a sutra kartsnye means completely completely burns without any residue it's not that it's half burnt oh oh prarabdha got left out sanchita got left out agami got left out no it all burns as though meaning the the burning is a metaphor burning means destruction but how does knowledge how is knowledge like a fire and how does knowledge destroy all the karmas this again i quoted the uh, verse from the mantra from the mundaka upanishad kshiyante cha asya karmani tasmin drishte paravare when this person who says i am limited i don't know what i am i'm so small i am not all and then what i am because where is the cause i am odd i want to connect with god this kind of a complaining sad person avara lowly and this loneliness is not because the world has done anything the loneliness is in built into this person because of atma ajnanam and because of this loneliness what does the person uh, do the person is just alienated cocooned from everything else and is isolated from ishvara from the cause of the universe from other jeevas from the jagat from one self really when one is alienated from one self the whole world looks like an inimical place everything and everyone is out to get me this is one's own wrong absolutely wrong conclusion and that one believes in this wrong conclusion is the prasada of avidya avidya means what ignorance of the self and so when this avara when this person who self styled lonely person self styled isolated sad person sees one self as non separate from para para means bhagavan ishvara brahman how to see one self as para and there is a committed exposure to this teaching you listen 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 every day and you make it a point to just be with this knowledge you allow yourself to get the fruit of this teaching and slowly the isolation the alienation and the and the feeling that the world is a terrible place and is out to get me everyone in it are inimical to me fades away because it's not a real feeling if it is real it cannot be removed in sleep also you must be feeling that but nobody feels this in sleep this itself shows that which comes and goes is not real and so the understanding of one's self as non separate from ishvara which is the prasada of atma gyanam allows one to let go of what of hanging on to the karma why does one hang on to the karma one hangs on in two different ways one hangs on to the Uh, meritorious results of actions that are righteous one hangs on punya why because it's a few drops of honey that i can sip and just have a good time i want the punya because life is full of 
all the demeritorious results of difficult actions, Papa. And so, I don't want the Papa, I hang on to the Punya. That's what one thinks. But indirectly, one is also hanging on to the Papa from the standpoint of being a victim. Oh, why me? Everyone else is happy except me. Everyone has what they want except... Hello? Yes. <laughs> you have to complete the sentence. Yeah. Everybody else is very fortunate except me. You have to sing that me in a sad raga. Me. Everyone is more fortunate. Everyone is more lucky. Everyone has better skills than me. Everybody has more money than me. About this me, there is an urgent need for me, mamsa. Okay, analysis. <laughs> Sanskrit word for analysis. A deeper look into this me. So this is how one hangs on to the Papa, even though one eschews the Papa and tells the Papa to go away. But still, indirectly, I am hanging on to it as, as a self-definition of myself. This is me. This much alone is me. And what is this me? This me is the one beleaguered by the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. This is the one that has been targeted. Look at me, poor old me, I don't have anything. A terrible way to define oneself, really. Because one starts believing in that, that becomes the reality. Yad bhavitam tad bhavati. You keep thinking that and that's what will become the reality. And so, one hangs on to the effects of both Papa and Punya in, the, in this very strange way. And one, the, the, so the karma becomes an important, what is that, item in one's self-definition. The Mahavakya is like a fire that sets a light sets in a blaze this particular definition questions one questions one ident one's identity as being targeted by everything including the heavens and the shastra takes care of this misidentification provided of course and this is a very big if if one is open to it if one develops and cultivates the qualifications if one surrenders to the Shastra, if one has humility, if the E can go, ego, and if the Ahankara does not run the show, if the Ahankara does not run the show, one has still a, uh, a beautiful portal where one can overcome this kind of an identity. So the karma is burnt on the psychological level of being identified with the karma. The karma I can let go because I know it is not me. It is anatma. And then from the standpoint of the shastra as a pramana, as a means of knowledge, what happens to the karma is that the, the kartritvam is gone, the one who says I am karta is gone. Why? Because that is one more identity that is questioned. First the identity that I am the, when Papa is concerned, when I identify with Papa, then I become what? Bhoktra, Bhokta, experiencer of all difficult situations. And I advertise those experiences to everybody who will listen and everybody who will not listen also I advertise. <laughs> and as a result, I am tied into that situation. 
I am a bhokta, I am bhokta means here victim. This is with regard to the papa. I am experiencing all these things. I don't know why. I have never hurt even a fly in my life. Keep the fly out of this ointment, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I have not hurt anybody. We have been so dharmic all our lives. Congratulations, wonderful. <laughs> what has that got to do with karma? Nothing. Don't think this is the only life. What about the 84,000 lives before this? So this is bhokta. That bhokta is killed off in the process of atma jnanam. Oh no, no, no. I am attached to the bhokta. Therefore what? I will not come to the next class. <laughs> because I want to nurse that hurt. I want to water it. It will not grow in beautiful flowers, even if you water it. Oh, but every plant has a flower, yes. In the middle of Thailand, in the mountains, there is one corpse flower. Its name is corpse flower. Guess why? It smells like a dead body. It looks, doesn't look like a flower, it looks several uh, square feet, big thing. It looks like more like a, what is that called? Ma mushroom, like a fungus, corpse flower. And the villagers, they get very worried when it is getting ready to bloom. <laughs> so, because you can, cannot coexist with this. And it takes a whole month to bloom and then die. In fact, we don't know when it blooms and when it dies because it smells like death throughout. Sometimes they have to go down the mountain and stay with relatives. Those who are living a little bit high in the things, this is all documented. Until it finishes the crucial peak aspect of its blooming. So if you nurture this victimization, that is the kind of flower it will grow. Okay? Yeah. Do you want that? Say no. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. This is bhokta. The bhokta is killed off. The identification with me as the bhokta is killed off. Through shruti, through the teachings and through shruti anukula yukti. Yukti means the, log the logical way to see that, okay, when you are asleep, are you crying? No. When are you crying? Only when I am awake. Okay, there you go. So this Vyabhichara, this contradiction itself shows that the status of you as a victim, Bhokta, recipient of Karma Phala, is not real. This is called logic. But the logic is not an independent pramana of means of knowledge operating here. It is alongside what the Shruti says to help assimilate and to help uh, understand this and let go of this beast of burden called Bhoktritvam victimhood. This is with regard to the Papas. With regard to all the Punyas, there is another kind of hood. What is that? Agent hood. Me. I deserve it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Punya also has bhoktritva. It's not so cut and dry. But the agency, when, when the circumstances are favorable to getting what I want, it's not the bhokta that comes out to play. Who is it? Karta. I did it. I am doing this. Me, 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 me. Lot of chest tapping. I did this. Ah, it was so difficult. Nobody else could do it but me. I have done this. And there also we need some me mamsa. Because the karta devolves into bhokta. First you feel good, I did this, I did this. Oh, nobody is recognizing it. <laughs> Bhokta. 
करता भोगता करता भोगता करता भोगता somebody sent me a small video clip of of three kittens watching a ping pong match you couldn't see the uh, the table tennis match you could just see the faces of the kitten following kittens following the ball karta bhogta karta bhogta karta bhogta it is dizzy you need something for the headache after which is going to come afterwards the knowledge not just falsifies the bhogta falsifies the doer as well how through the understanding that everything is already given starting with the ability to complain given <laughs> yep i can complain starting with whatever one needs given buddhi given body given mind given senses given resources given even if somebody were to say i am s m m what is that self made man self declared self made man bitter against humanity in general and the extended family in particular what did they do parents died when i was young what did these relatives do nothing they had so much money they just put me out on the road nothing was there they forget road was there ha ah. <laughs> i studied under the street light street light given i had only two pairs of clothes two pairs of clothes given i had very little to eat very little to eat given i somehow got educated that somehow is bhagwan hello given No no it is not bhagwan i went to the principal of the college and did a dharana there dharana means a, a sit in there until he took me and gave me admission given everything is given ability to complain that nobody helped me and i am a self made man finally given <laughs> and the exposure to the shruti contradicts this at every step of the way that there is nothing self made nothing is self made it's already given one is born into a world which is already there whatever one needs is there the baby coming out of the mother's womb what does it need milk immediately it needs milk milk is provided not just for human beings for all the mammals they need milk milk is provided the baby doesn't say oh i'm supposed to lead an independent life let me get a six pack of milk before i'm born no it comes out empty handed <laughs> it doesn't come out for carrying an oxygen tank up till now i didn't need to breathe i need to breathe and uh, i need an oxygen tank no it doesn't bring oxygen it doesn't carry pack a sandwich before it is born and not only that if you look at the um, birth of uh, things like uh, elephants in the wild giraffes all this they don't need a little gps device how to make our way to the mother's breast they know the way <laughs> given some of these small animals like dogs and cats their eyes are sealed shut for 10 15 days they don't open their eyes still even without eyes they are able to make their way to the milk given it's all ishvara and in this understanding of ishvara the kartritvam goes into a corner and sits <laughs> oh 
with a dunce cap on its head. I am such a fool. I thought I was the author. And now I find out that I am just a plagiarist. I am not an author. I am a copycat. That's all I am. Copying everything. And the Kartritvam is falsified just like the Bhaktritvam. The Papa Punya sneak away. Like, uh, you know, in the stories, in the fairy tales, like you chant one incantation and the bad witch melts. So here also same thing. Karma is a spoof. Karma is for those who identify as the karta and bhokta. Neither doer nor the done in am I. This is my reality and as I own up this reality, then this whole Rashi, this heap of karma, self-destructs. Karma is for people who are waiting for handouts. Who have, why is it called handout? Because they have a hand out all the time. <laughs> karma is for people who wait for handouts. But here, uh, everything has already been given. I am connected to the whole, even from the standpoint of this body, mind, sense complex. I am connected to everything in the universe. Given. I am connected to not only that which is given, I am connected to the giver, Ishvara. All this will be told later. So therefore, the kar- karma is falsified. Like a person who stood for election, but died before the uh, the results came out, and won the election also. Died on election day, and so, but pe- people didn't know that. People gave him the vote anyway. Let us say some politician. He won the election, but who do, does that win belong to? No one. Who do those votes belong to? No one. There is no claimant. Just like in the dream, the dream lottery. You won the dream lottery and you had a dream that you are taking this to the bank and then you wake up. Then what happens to that money? Gone. Gone means what? It's never there. It is never there to go. This is what I want you to come to, the understanding. Gone means the understanding is it was there and now it is not there. It was never there. It was never there. It was conjured up. This is also similarly conjured up. In the light of the knowledge, Sanchita gone because there is no karta bhokta to claim this Sanchita. Oh, oh, poor me is not there. Oh, yeah, this is me is not there. Sanchita gone, Papa Purnya both. Then Agami karma, because the person of Atmagyanam is considered to be a saintly person and a dharmic person, they will not do anything against dharma. So there is not any karma that is being accrued during their life. But, you know, one is in a human body after all. So uh, some small papas and punyas might be there. Small papas and lot of punyas will be there. Because... They are, let's say they are teachers. They are teaching Vedanta. Teaching of Vedanta brings lots of punya. Huge amounts of punya. Again, there is no claimant because the jnani does not want that punya. And so what happens to that punya? The Shastra says it is taken away by the, the shishyas, the disciples of the jnani. They take it away. They say, you don't want this punya, can I have it please? (laughs) Give it to me. (laughs) They take it away. 
and then supposing while walking in the rain you know those uh, what are they called um, worms earthworms and all may come inadvertently there is some stepping on the earthworm earthworm got moksha under the gnani's feet little papa is there that papa also does the gnani does not claim inadvertently done something somebody you know um, something happened something whatever it is and then what happens to the papa it is taken away by it goes it's not taken away it is it goes to the people who criticize the gnani ah very interesting it goes to the people who criticize the person who say ah big deal what do they know i know more <laughs> what use is their knowledge they are not paying attention to me they are paying attention to everybody else so these kinds of feelings and these kind of things then the papa of the gnani it is believed goes to the people who criticize which means what since we do we cannot tell who is a gnani and who is not so better to not criticize anybody <laughs> why we don't want nobody's papa <laughs> that's what why we have enough of our own so <laughs> we don't want any more papa so we don't criticize criticize anybody because the gnani doesn't have a board around the neck i have self knowledge nobody is advertising it's an inside job so you don't criticize you don't criticize what they know you don't criticize what they don't know you don't criticize their conduct you don't criticize their behavior this is the teaching so sanchita and agami taken care of what is left prarabdha what happens to the prarabdha kshayat you know it is it is only through exhaustion it is taken care of so this can be looked at from two standpoints because the shastra says all the karmas are gone we also have to say the prarabdha is also gone for whom from the standpoint of the gnani the prarabdha is gone because the gnani doesn't say this is my body and i am living in it and oh now this body now i need a check up there is no i connected to the body now i need a check up it's like when ramana maharshi had that cancer the first time he you know he they, they just rushed him to what is that called radiation treatments he was very tired he was just in bed all the time came back from the course of radiation treatments and the devotees felt wonderful ha ah, thank god he is alive and thank god he is okay then the next time after 8 9 months or one year or something it came back again and again they wanted to take it to the take him to the hospital and this time ramana maharshi said the second time he said no first time he said i just let the body go and since this body was more valuable to you than to me i allowed the treatment to happen this time what it is not it won't work i already know it's not going to work so there is no need to do this this is what he decided so like that there is very little body mind sense complex identification enough for what is called sharira yatra to to complete the journey of this body to go through the journey of this body it is there otherwise it is not there and even while going through the body journey the gnani doesn't think this is my body this is my ailment now i have to have bypass surgery oh no now i am in a wheelchair all these thoughts and uh, things are not there and therefore what therefore this is the 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 gnani we can say doesn't have prarabdha prarabdha karma 
is not touched by prarabdha but from the standpoint of the onlookers who see the gnani shriveled gray wrinkled sitting in the sitting in the wheelchair going to the hospital checking in for some surgery coming out all this the devotees and the students see that so from the point of the students we can say the prarabdha continues from the point of the onlookers but from the standpoint of the gnani there is no prarabdha because the body does not belong to the gnani at all and then when the body drops so all free while alive and when the body drops totally free because there is nothing there that is going to bring the person back and this is talked about in the next verse न पुण्य कर्म न पुण्य कर्म नाम वृद्धि न हानि पाप कर्म ना नित्या संगात्मनिष्ठा सो देर इज नो पुण्य for those for the for the person nice uh, compound for the gnani uh, nitya asanga atmanishthana for the people who are nitya nitya means always always asanga uninvolved with even their own body or mind or senses and involved with what is happening to them and not happening to them atmanishthana the one who have nitaram sthitihi abidance total and complete abidance in the i as sachidananda meaning the knowers of brahman and ishvara as one self so for them what happens when they have punya after teaching vedanta and after doing good things for the world then they don't suddenly they don't get benefited by the punya they don't get happier they don't get uh, um, uh, what's that uh, swayed by the punya there is no vriddhi there is no difference just because there is a lot of punya there is no difference in how they are then let's say papa comes and then because of papa nahanihi let's say the body is going through a challenging time and they are in the hospital and going through through treatments for the gnani there is no hani loss no loss nothing is lost that knowledge is not lost satchidanandam brahma i am is not lost everything is is wonderful and then Mm. so this is the declaration of vedanta since we have studied karma in detail there is no there, this is just a reiteration of what we have looked at neither affected by papa nor affected by punya next one buddhi purva buddhi purva पापकर्मणाश्चिमो ज्ञान अहो अहो इज एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ वंड ओ वॉट अ डिलाइट दिस इज अहो and then so aho means it's a expression of wonder so papa karmana papa karmana means the um, the sinful deeds for the sinful deeds means difficult papa deeds deeds that go actions that have gone against dharma those kinds of actions which are not in tandem with what is correct what is right etc hurtful deeds 
deeds that have robbed you know deeds such as robbing people and homicide and all kinds of things that are forbidden by the scriptures not just the in the hindu tradition but every every religion forbids certain things so those kinds of deeds then if somebody does then what happens there is so much guilt there is so much papa accrued papa here means karma phala not the action but the result of action so there is so much papa accrued there is so much karma phala and how to deal with this then it has gone and joined sanchita my i have i have, my life is totally gone so what what is ad- advised are initiating new karmas of atonement prayashtitta cleansing of the heart and uh, the saying sorry for all the deeds the shastra gives many kinds of atonement karmas this is just a affair a private affair between oneself and ishvara it is not told to everybody oh i am doing atonement karma nothing to advertise and some ghora karmas are there very difficult karmas one of them is called what chandrayana not chandrayana that's different chandrayana one month long atonement karma you start with a full moon and you eat a full meal what is a full meal whatever you eat the only difference is that on that day you divide what you eat into 15 portions and eat one meal all 15 portions you eat on the full moon day then the next day 14 portions after that 13 uh oh and then 12 countdown has begun 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 days are over 14 days are over then after that you don't eat a single bite on the new moon day following the full moon up till then people kind of make it then you lose it because the next day you can have only one bite of food and then you slowly go. one two three four five and on the next full moon day you can have the whole uh, meal and then the fast is complete chandrayanam oh can i have snacks in between no don't even think about it no snacks <laughs> then there is one prajapatya khrichra there are many kinds of khrichras but the biggest one is called prajapatya khrichra and that is how these modern contemporary people borrowed the idea of uh, what is that called intermittent fasting from this only it has come so what is this khrichra so first day you eat lunch the normal lunch oh this is sounding better than chandrayana yes it is <laughs> then the second day you eat only dinner i was talking about this and there was a young girl in the class and she said i know on the third day you eat breakfast no <laughs> on the third day you just hope somebody will bring you something you can't go to the dining hall and say i like this a little more of that little less of this i don't want this at all nothing you can perhaps have a hungry face and around your friends and hope that they will bring you whatever they want you to eat on the third day on the fourth day you don't eat anything at all this is called a baby khrichra four day fast then when you do three of these four day fa- fasts it becomes three of these khrichras 12 days it becomes prajapatya khrichra 
This is all ways of atoning for whatever one has done. Because fasting is very, very um, efficacious, I tell you. Fasting is extremely efficacious because when you fast, you feel it very fast. Yeah. <laughs> and it is an efficacious uh, manner of atoning for past actions. How many people can do Chandrayana? Very few. Even Krichra sometimes is daunting and difficult. Especially in the middle of the second Krichra, it is somebody's birthday and there is cake. Oh my God, how to finish this? Another time I'll do it. This is the, the resolve goes. And also, karmically speaking, this much if you fast will only take away a few papas. How many papas have I done? OMG, I have lost count and I have done some terrible things in my life. This is like a reckoning. All the people I have hurt, all the people who have done this to, that to, this is too much. And then one sit, feels like sitting in a corner holding one's own head and rocking back and forth. <laughs> out of despair. How will these papas go? Until the papas go, the knowledge won't come. Until the knowledge comes, the papas won't go. What to do? And here there is a beautiful assurance given. What is the assurance? You want to do the best prayaschitta and the fastest prayaschitta? Yes, yes, yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Study Vedanta. No prayaschitta like Vedanta. When you have Vedanta, all the karmas are like Pac-Man, gobble, gobble, gobble. Nothing is left. Everything gone. And so, this is the declaration of Vedanta. So, Papa Karmanam, for the Papa actions which have resulted in Papa, then what kind of actions? Buddhi Purva. A buddhi purva, two kinds of actions, buddhi purva and a buddhi purva, kritanam. So those actions which have been done with the buddhi right in front, meaning knowingly done. Ah, you did this to me, wait till, wait till you see what all I can do to you. And thinking that the person does something terrible to the other person gossips and spreads a rumor about them which is not true and because of which uh, their reputation takes a hit. They lose their job, they lose their standing in society, all because of what? Some falsehood that this first person spread. Buddhi purva, meaning knowingly, consciously, deliberately, with a view to bringing somebody down because they were in the way of what I wanted, that this is called Buddhi Purva Kritam Papam. Kritam done. Then sometimes it's inadvertent. A Buddhi Purva. Sometimes somebody said something and somebody else got hurt for no reason at all. They didn't mean it in that way. Yet somebody took offense. A Buddhi Purva. They were not wanting to do this. Or even stepping on an insect and killing it inadvertently. A buddhi purva kritam papam, buddhi purva kritam papam, for them, for these two, whether the action, the difficult actions, the papa producing actions are committed knowingly or unknowingly, then prayashtittam aho jnanam. The best prayashtitta is jnanam. The best atonement is self knowledge because of which the papas totally disappears. Totally disappear. That is the one. And this is iterated in the Bhagavad Gita also. Even the worst kind of person who has done a lot of papa can be totally purified and absolved by this knowledge. by gaining this knowledge. 
So in these we have the Jnana Phalam. We have seen Jnana Phalam. And what is the result of this knowledge? And how one is absolved of all karma, etc. Then in order to understand more what this knowledge is really about, then we go to um, the... uh, Verse number 30. Drigdrishya udvaupa dartha ustaha. Paras paravilakshano. Drig brahma drishyam maya. No, wait, it won't work. Drig brahma drishyam maya syat. Yeah. Then again we come back to the author's famous uh, methodology. There are two things in the universe. What are they? Drik. What is Drik? Seer. Seer. Knower. And then what is the other one? Drishya. Seeing. Only two things. That who is the seer? the observer, the objectifier of all things and things that are objectified, seen through and understood through various means of knowledge available to me. And very simply and beautifully it is said, what is the seer? Brahma. Oh, but you said, I am the seer. Exactly. What are you? Brahman. Ishvara, Bhagavan, that which is the whole, that which is the source of all existence, that which is sentient. Drig Brahma. And what is everything else? Maya. Knowledge. All knowledge. Everything is just knowledge. Like if you take a flower, what is this? Flower. And then you ask, you you know, you say, why is it this particular color? Knowledge. Why is it this particular shape? That's knowledge. Flower is, when I say, that isness of the flower, the existence of the flower can never, ever, ever be divorced from the knowledge of the flower. The existence of the flower is as good as what I know about the flower. This many petals, this kind of flower. It's all knowledge. What else is existence other than knowledge? Asti bhati, sat chit, satyam jnanam. The two are inextricably connected. Sat is chit, chit is sat. So when I say flower is, there is no other way of knowing the flower's existence than through what I know about the flower. Flower is, how do you know? Well, petal is, stem is, color of the flower is, all this is what knowledge. Everything is knowledge. Flower is means what? Flower knowledge is. How long does the flower last? This is already dried up. Okay, FYI. But, (laughs) how long does the flower last? Well, depends upon the flower. Rose, you know, just wilts after a few days. Carnation lasts a little longer. That's because it's not a carnation, it's an incarnation. Ah. Everything is an incarnation of Ishvara. How long does it last? Oh, not very long. Who says who? The one who is the drik, the observer of the flower, not lasting. What do you mean by not lasting? It has wilted. But it still is. Flower is... 
bud is flower bud is blossomed flower is and then what wilted flower is is doesn't go away knowledge doesn't go away in fact you can do a research on how it wilts each flower and somebody can do a phd on that doesn't go the flower doesn't go away and then what it withered withered flower is oh now i'm going to compost it composted flower is that compost helped another flower bush come into being another flower is is doesn't go is 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 that is ishvara what are the first two letters of ishvara if you write in english is <laughs> then that is resolves into i is 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 is, is. no where does the is go is always simply is and that is is non separate from the see here i the whole world is nothing but bhagavan ishvara is 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 and so this is maya maya means all knowledge from the standpoint of ishvara maya is all knowledge that knowledge of the flower that knowledge of how it wilts what it is everything it's all the, the name and the form and the colors everything that's all knowledge for ishvara if the seer doesn't know better and gets entangled in this in this uh, uh, very variegated universe of names and forms gets entangled in the words and their meanings in the names and the forms then that same maya is agnyanam the shadow side of maya is avidya atma agnyanam self ignorance ignorance for the jiva all knowledge for ishvara that is what maya is so maya is the creative force of the universe but since that force has the power of veiling my own nature from me and projecting the one into many i get caught i am at the shadow side we talked about it at satsang last night about being in the three, three guna tapestry this is the problem drig brahma drishyam maya iti vedanta dindimah and the next verse is going to talk about the difference the seeming difference between jiva and ishvara and thereby giving us the what the, a taste of what this knowledge is all about we will see two announcements one is the next class will be at what time 11 o'clock right here and then people who want to see me i will be sitting somewhere where is that room that way okay so i'll be i'll be sitting in the room now after the class for briefly so you can come so all the people i told you can come see me today can come om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavashishyate om shanti 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 hi hari hi om shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om